programme features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. The clouds have come over. It's trapped the warm air in. The wind is picking up. And this is Safari Live. everybody and welcome to the sunrise safari but unfortunately there's no sunrise yeah my name is Taylor and on camera with me today is Craig and we are bringing you a live and interactive safari so remember hashtag safari live on Twitter with all of your questions and we look forward to hearing you both Byron and I are out in the vehicles today woohoo Senzo's back on camera and of course you've already met Craig aka uh, Buttonut Craig aka Batman now as I said earlier the clouds well they rolled in last night and uh, they graced us with their presence. Actually quite nice to have some cloud coverage today, keeping the warmth in. Otherwise, I would imagine it would be quite a chilly morning. Now, animals. I'm sure you want an update from last night. Unfortunately, I actually didn't hear much at all. I didn't even hear a hyena. How unusual, because they're always in camp raiding. Uh, Craig, did you hear any calls of the night? Okay. Craig said he thought he uh, heard some lions. So, well, that's where we're going, Craig. He said around um, Gallego, Buffalo Boundary side. So, what we're going to do now is we're actually just going to head straight down via Teller Access. We're going to go all the way to Gowrie Gate. We're going to check Sydney's Dam and we're going to go along the northern boundary and see who has been moving around, if anybody has crossed into the property. Remember, lion roars can travel a very, a very far away. So, even if they were calling, it doesn't necessarily mean that they were actually on the property. But I hope that they are, because I'd really, really, really like to see some lions, especially after watching some of the footage of lions taking on buffalo from last year. That was so spectacular, and it's really just got me so excited about winter all over again. But we're going to be searching and hopefully, searching and hopefully, the next time we come to us, we'll have some clues as to who was moving around on the property last night. But let's go across to Byron and King Senzor, so they can say good morning. Good morning, my name is Byron, and on camera with me this morning is the Mara Prince himself, Senzo. <laughs> Senzo's back from the Mara, and great to have him back, and nice early start, hold on a second. Oh, I can hear a barred owlet. Oh, I think it's a little bit far for us, it's, it sounds like it's quite far into the bush. Something like that. That's the African barred owlet. But I think it's a bit too far for us, unfortunately. Just heard it calling now. Yeah, sounds a bit far. I don't think we'll be able to get in there. That's a pity. Love seeing those little owls. Well, um, like Taylor, I also didn't hear much last night. I thought I heard some lions. Senzo says he heard lions early, early this morning, but possibly quite far. He wasn't sure how close they were. So we're just driving very, very carefully, checking for any tracks, any signs of animals that may have been moving around during the night. It is overcast, as Taylor mentioned, but it still feels it feels a bit chilly this morning. Also feels like I'm struggling to wake up a little bit. I don't know why. Oh, look what we've just found. Hang on, let me try to get us into a little gap here. There we go. Good morning, sir. Now, it's about 18 degrees Celsius, um, or 
what's that, 74 Fahrenheit? Is it 74? 64. Must be 74. We found a giraffe. This is an old male. You can see, um, you can see the, um, the calcification around his skull. Look at those protrusions um, or knobs on the skull. Just like those Aussie cones. You can see you know, those two very bald Aussie cones or the horns of the giraffe. And then just behind them you can see two protrusions there. Um, and the older the giraffe get, the more prominent those those um, bumps on the on the head become. And you'll also see on the forehead he's also got one. Well, Nikki, are you excited about seeing the giraffe? You say it's been a while. Um, it has, although Nikki, we um, when, when was it? Um, Saturday and yesterday we had giraffe on Safari Live. Um, but it had been a while. It had been a while. You're right. We hadn't seen giraffe for quite some time. And all of a sudden, once we... <laughs> it's funny how the bush works sometimes. We were discussing it, saying we haven't seen giraffe for quite a while. And then uh, um, and all of a sudden they, they've arrived. Megan feeling very wise this morning in the final control. She says, when it rains, it pours. Megan's going on leave, I think perhaps that's why she's so excited and chipper this morning. <laughs> Isn't that great? Look at that. You can see that... Uh, those oxpeckers sitting on the giraffe already early, early in the morning, oxpeckers sitting on... Picking off the ticks and the fleas. James, you asked how tall can a giraffe grow to? James, about five and a half to six meters for a big big male. Um, I think females are, are a bit shorter, maybe four, four and a half meters. But big males can get up to six meters tall. Senzo, did you see many different giraffe up in, in East Africa? Mm. Which ones did you see there? I don't know what you mean, but they're kind of Alright, yeah. So there are slightly different species of giraffe up in Kenya. Um, and Senzo said he saw a few of them. We only have the southern giraffe, this giraffe species, down in southern Africa. That barred owlet hasn't stopped calling. Constantly calling. It's quite a chill in the wind at the moment. Oh, it's great to see the giraffe towering above the trees, above some of the... Makeup girl, you asked what does giraffe fur feel like? I don't know. I don't know. There you can see that calcification around the forehead. Clearly you can see those bumps and protrusions. Um, makeup girl, I don't know. I've never felt a giraffe before. So I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. I really don't know. Now there is, um, I'm trying to think where it is now, I think it's in Kenya, there's a place called Giraffe Manor. Um, I think it's in Kenya if I'm not mistaken, Giraffe Manor, and you can go there and, and while you're having breakfast the giraffes stick their heads through the window. I think you on the first floor of a building and um, the giraffes stick their heads through the window and they come and um, they, they basically join you for breakfast, you can feed them through the window. Um, and you can see those long tongues coming in. You can touch them. 
you listen, you are starting to giraffe aggressive. Well, I wouldn't say aggressive, no, they, they generally prefer to move away from, from any potential danger or threat. However, however, um, the giraffe can be very curious. So if they do see a predator, and they'll often go stand and watch and keep an eye on the predator just to make sure there's no danger towards them. But also, the giraffe can kick very, very hard. They can kick both forwards and backwards using their legs. And I mean, they can seriously, uh, I think suffering a blow from a giraffe kick would not be, would not be ideal. I've seen lions get flung in all directions from a giraffe kicking them off. And there he goes. That's a lovely start. Nice to see a giraffe again. Isn't that great? Well, that's good. Let's see what else we can start or what else we can find. Sounds like I have a frog in my throat this morning. Oh dear. All falling apart. I don't know. <laughs> Alright, now Taylor's gone in search of lions, I think. She's headed all the way to the north northwestern corner. Let's go and have a look, find out how her search is going. Byron, I think I have to agree with you this morning. I've also got a little bit of a frog in my throat, though I had it yesterday. I don't know, can, is it possible that I could, could have talked too much, that my voice is now disappearing? That would probably be a real treat. My mom will be very excited about that. She'll probably tell me to come home straight away. She's probably never experienced quite Taylor before. Now, Craig and I have been listening to the alarm calls of Zebra. And they've been calling, I heard them actually quite early this morning, that's the only sound of the night that I heard, but not typically a nocturnal creature. And they've come from Vuyatel and they've crossed into Buffelsok. You can even look, if you just look on front of the road, these tracks that you can sort of see with the naked eye, those are all zebra footprints. So I don't know if there were maybe lions that have been chasing them around, but in my experience, often when one zebra gets taken out of a herd, the herd normally is quite distressed about it, yeah? especially if it's a mare that's lost her foal. And sometimes you can often hear her even after her foal has been taken down. For hours later, they'll continue distressing. I haven't seen one lion footprint yet, though. So I think what we'll do is we'll carry on over here. I did tell Rexon about the alarm calls. So he's going to come into Buffelsook. And he's going to go and investigate that site. Now, Craig obviously said earlier this morning he thought he heard some lions around Gallagher Short Trap of Zook Boundary. Maybe it won't be a bad idea if we actually take one of those roads and just start weaving in the section. Uh, it's, um, it's possible that the lions were on the property and we just never found them yesterday. It was, it was just me driving around and everyone else was driving in Torchwood and other spots. And, and you may have remembered... Um, he's saying that I heard lionesses calling and I just I couldn't find their tracks and I couldn't find them And then I don't I think I forgot to tell you when I went to town to pick Senzo up There were a whole family of kudu that were alarming uh, around Gallego camp I couldn't see what they were alarming for they were looking down into the drainage line to me That said sort of says leopards because that's where the lion uh, the leopards like to move around in but let's just uh, let's just go here and have a quick little look around. So, Rexon's come from Gauri Cutline side, so he's done, he's gone past the big jackalberry. We'll go down this way. And I want to just make sure that I check very carefully. Right, let's see who is walking here. Lots of hyena tracks, so maybe it's not a bad idea to pop into the hyena den. They're all going back towards the direction of the den, so we'll do that too. Um, just quickly checking, this is always a great intersection to check. Very sandy. No. Huh. Don't fly, don't fly. We might be able to watch a courtship process of some turtle doves. That's something that I've been seeing at the moment, is the males puffing themselves up and trying to sing their beautiful song to entice a female turtle dove. Now they're just walking side by side in a serpentine motion, which is so typical of the doves. Remember that if you're ever doing a tracking assessment. If you have a bird track, 
that is serpentining in the road is most likely from a dove. That's very sweet. Well, both of them walking down the road, looking for seeds, anything delicious to eat. Oh, and it's very important as we sit here to also listen to everything that's going around us. There isn't many birds talking, but what I am listening out for is perhaps a roar, a soaring from, uh, <coughs> sorry, soaring from a leopard, or perhaps a distress call from a prey species. Mainly what I can hear is the wind. The wind is now starting to pick up. Okay, right, let's carry on. Let's see what we can find here. Hmm, it's very quiet, but maybe. Oh. Well, it looks, I just want to show you this termite mound very quickly. It looks like there's maybe a couple of different species living here. If we go to the top sort of hole, look at all that dung. There must be mongoose in here, dwarf mongoose. That looks relatively fresh, but they won't be worried about coming out just yet. It's overcast, it's a bit chilly, and the wind is picking up. They'll wait until the sun breaks through the clouds. And then there's another hole just further down. That could be from something slightly larger, maybe something like a warthog. Though actually, it looks like, I don't know, maybe somebody was digging in there quite some time ago. Perhaps an aardvark was maybe at one point sticking its nose into that mound looking for termites but sadly there is nothing there but we're going to keep carrying on we're going to head towards the hyena den and hopefully we'll pick up on uh, some lion or leopard tracks around here hopefully lion tracks that's what i'd like to see i'm going to send you back across to byron i'm not sure if he's still with his giraffe but hopefully he's uh, going to find you a spotted cat oh, well taylor i'm not sure about a spotted cat however I have found tracks of a male lion walking along the road. We're on Twin Dams Road. It looks like it's heading down towards Twin Dams. I just hope that this lion hasn't crossed out of our property already. So maybe a good look around yet. Some nice clear tracks of this male lion walking through the area. That's very exciting. I'm going to keep my eyes peeled. You know, straight down the road. He's walked all the way along here. Oh, it would be really, really wonderful to find a male lion this morning. <clears throat> Part of me wishes that uh, he just came around the corner and he was lying in the road. That would be that would be wonderful. It would be great. So let's have a look. Keep your eyes peeled, Senzo. Maybe there's a male lion that's lying down somewhere. Often what happens is they do, I mean, they cover huge distances at night. We know that. But, um, but early in the morning, they may go and lie down and may go and lie down and rest a little bit because they've been walking around so much. And then potentially get up and move around a little bit later again. having a look while I'm driving just trying to check very carefully to see if I can still see any sign of this line tracks Excuse me a second, let me jump out here. Uh, now, Bribri, you asked, what do I mean by relatively fresh? Um, well, Bribri, so there were no lion tracks around this area um, last night or yesterday. So, when, what I mean by relatively fresh, it means the tracks look quite clear. So, so it's, <laughs> it's basically a way of me covering myself a little bit so I don't say they're completely fresh and we don't find the line so if I say they're relatively fresh they're from last night that's what I mean but uh, I'm just trying to see now I can't see another track now a male line track is is very easy to spot um, especially in the soft sand that we've got around here um, 
Oh dear, it looks like he's given us a slip. I wonder if he didn't head up through that section of bush over there. You don't see a lion looking at us by any chance, Enzo. See, I think those tracks cut off there. Now I'm just trying to work out which direction he's gone. They definitely cut off the road. Um, I'm no longer on the road, but... Let's see. Alright, I think let's go this way. Let's go have a look up here. Maybe he's cut through this section um, and he's come out this side. Let, we'll have a look around here. Let's head back to Taylor. She's going towards that hyena den. I wonder if there's going to be any activity around there. I'm not so sure. We've actually just arrived at the hyena den. We're going all the way around it now. There was nobody at the front entrance, so we're just going to check here towards the back where they sometimes like to lay as well but I haven't seen anything just yet but it's weird though because it's very fresh no we're not going anywhere like that please stay in four by four uh, but there's been so much fresh hyena tracks coming in here too so perhaps we've already missed them maybe they've come back and they've left again yeah, it doesn't look like there's anyone here just quickly go around and we'll get a better view so I'm just watching where I drive so I don't drive over too many big logs. No. I'm going to keep going. Doesn't look like anyone's home. It's very quiet here. Yeah. No one laying outside the den. Tima hasn't poked her little head out to come and say hello. Hmm. Oh, watch out, Craig. No. We'll have to try again a little bit later then, so we're just going to make, try and get out of here quickly. Oh, actually, there's no such thing as going anywhere around here quickly. It's, um, it's quite thick. I'm going to dodge lots of trees. Come on, Wendy. Ah. Sorry, no, I'm, I'm really concentrating. Turn, car, turn. <laughs> Right, we're going to get out of here eventually, I promise. And like I said, it's just going to take some time. So while we bumble the bot and maybe a hyena appears in the process, we're going to send you back across to Byron, who is chasing after a male lion. I am indeed, Taylor. I hope we find him. I'm just, I'm checking very, very carefully, having a look at the, at the ground, scanning the bush, but... Oh, elephant, elephant up ahead. Yeah, that's nice. That's great. Look, there's... Just see, is it just the one? There might be some others up ahead. The road actually bends. Let's go have a look. Oh, just through there. Have a look at that one so long. Just trying to see. That's... It would be unusual to see one by, by itself. The other nice thing is now sitting and viewing this elephant, we're keeping quiet and then maybe we hear alarm calls if that lion is still in the area. Maybe the lion even calls for us. That would be great. Hearing a lion roar is definitely a sure way of getting in the right area to hopefully find those lions. Let's go. I'm going to move ahead. Let's try to catch up with this elephant. And like I said, it's strange to see one by itself. It's not unusual. You can uh, you can definitely see an elephant by itself from time to time. But I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if there's possibly um, a few more up ahead. We'll have a look. Because this is a fairly young elephant. So strange to see one by itself. Oh, this is this is very peculiar. Just 
just hold on, I think this elephant's gonna, it's just behind this bush over here to my right, but it's heading in this direction, we might get a nice view of it. I can't hear any others. <laughs> this is actually hiding be behind there, there it comes. Nikki, you asked how would the elephant act if a lion roars? Um, well, Nikki, I think, um, I think, you know, they they so used to hearing these animals roar and, and make a noise. So, um, so I don't, unless it was very close, this elephant probably wouldn't react. But if it was really close, the elephant would most likely try and get out of the area. Because this elephant is alone, this is a young male, so I wouldn't be surprised if this young male's been pushed out of a herd. Perhaps, maybe that that is why he is alone. But it is a young male. Sometimes these younger males do prefer meeting up with big old bulls, and um, and the those older bulls then teach these younger males how to be successful, where to look for food, where to look for water. Um, and um, and also to try and know where to find females and what to do when you when you do find a herd. That's a nice surprise, though. Sure, we've been lucky so far this morning. Giraffe, elephant, lion tracks. We better find this lion, Senzo. We will. That's it. That's it. I like the positivity. I haven't seen any tracks coming out on this road. That elephant is still continuing through. I have one more look at him. This young male. James, you asked Senzo if there's anything particular he'd like to see being back. Senzo? Really? <laughs> uh, Senzo says he wants to see leopard and especially Tumba. He says he would love to see Tumba, that young male leopard. See, this elephant isn't even feeding, just constantly moving. So that could also, that would also make me think uh, perhaps he has picked up on the scent of, um, of some other elephant and he's trying to catch up to them. It's moving very, very quickly. What a nice surprise. Nice to see a young young male elephant. Alright, let's carry on our search now for this male lion. I'm going to actually turn around here quickly. Also, you see, what what I've done is um, we, we've viewed this, this male elephant, the young male elephant, but you can see he's not too comfortable with the vehicle. Uh, he's alone, he's... I don't think he's, um, he's really interested in a vehicle getting too close to him. So there's no reason for us to stay and follow and continue to push him and to push him away. You could cause the elephant to get a bit agitated and we don't want that. We've had a nice view of him. He's moving around looking for others so we'll leave him and let him carry on his business. So I'm going to carry on with my business of trying to find the male lion and let's head back to Taylor and find out how her morning is going and what her plan is now after that hyena den. I'm actually not sure. We've just come on Gallego shortcut, the actual little shortcut, and past the pan, and I have not seen any predator tracks at all just yet. So I'm still trying to, well, find some tracks to sort of follow up on. But I haven't had one, one leopard or one lion track. So I'm obviously searching in the wrong areas. I think maybe we're gonna, maybe we'll go right into the western corner and check around in pilot play. Maybe Shadow has returned to her favorite road. Hmm. Now, Carl, you're wondering if there's any updates on Tingana. Hmm. 
I haven't actually heard anything about him for, for quite some time, but, but that's also not unusual. We know Tungan is fine, and he's got quite an extensive territory that he needs to maintain. So he's probably just off uh, doing a patrol, maybe, which would be even better, which would make me smile, is that he's actually something and he's feeding himself but I haven't seen him in quite some some time I'm trying to even think the last time we had a leopard story around cap ounces of that oh a little Daker so hopefully he'll come back he's, he's due to be seen we haven't seen him for a couple of days but um hopefully he will come back soon and we'll get to see him again he's a beautiful big leopard that's a little male Daker that's actually not bolting away from us how unusual so yesterday I was talking about uh, Daker, and we were actually looking at Daker Dung. Oh, there's two of them. There's a female in the background too. You can just see her moving. There she is. Hello, young lady. Or oh, you're a, an experienced, wise old gal. It's hard to tell with the Daker because they're grey already. Ha 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 So funny. Uh, anyways, I was saying that we're really lucky at this time of the year because of all the vegetation dying out in the winter months. And hopefully... We'll get to spend more and more time with these animals. I'm particularly enjoying the daycare and the Stiernbork sightings. Now, something that we need to keep watching out for because I'm convinced that I'm going to show it to you live one day because I have a lot of luck with it. It's been quite some time. But I have seen daycare feeding on mice. I cannot tell you how many times. At least three times at Sabi Sabi. I've seen it in the Eastern Cape. I actually saw it when I was doing my guide training for the first time. And I'll never forget my trainer was telling me, you know, Taylor, or telling all of us, um, would you believe it if I told you that Daco are actually one of the only antelope uh, that will feed on chicks, on mice and rats and, and gerbils and things like that uh, to sort of supplement their diets, particularly in the winter months. And I said, ah, oh, absolute hogwash. That's not true. And then, a couple of hours later, we'd gone on a night drive and we actually saw it. And I watched this dake actually stomp this mouth, mouse with its foot. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And then gobbled it up. And then, I was just said to myself, wow. It was one of the first bizarre sightings I ever had in the bush. And I thought, my goodness, nature is weird. And it just does whatever it wants. And then we've come around a couple of times with my tracker candy. I'd obviously told him about these sightings that I've had. And he said, never, they don't eat mice. And I said, I promise you. And we eventually found this female Daka. And we know that Daka and Stenbok are territorial. So you can often find the same one in the same spot. And she was quite relaxed around the vehicles. And a couple of times we came around the corner and there you would, you'd see her with a tail just outside her mouth and then sort of sloping it up as if it was a piece of spaghetti. And he was also completely blown away. He had no idea that Daka would do such things. Well, that's quite cool. So that's what we're going to be doing now. Every time we watch a Daka, we're going to try and spend as much time with it before it completely disappears and we're gonna watch them and hope they'll catch him. Well, oh hang on. Here's a nice question. Now Daniel you're wondering if the female dake is the only antelope species that grows horns. And uh, no not at all. That was actually the male we were looking at. The male's got the horns. The female was at the back. She lacks horns. But there are plenty of uh, different antelope out in, in, in Africa where both male and female have horns. I'll give you an example. Let's, I'm going to have a look. I think these are African green pigeons just up on these knob thorns. It's difficult to see with the light. But um, a blessbok, for example. Both male and female have got horns. Ah, look, wildebeest. They have, both male and female have got horns. So there's quite a few different species of antelope where both sexes have got the horns. I mean, it's endless. You can go on and on and on. Uh, heart bears or another one. All the birds are now starting to chatter. But there we go. Some African green pigeons posing right at the tops of the trees waiting for the sun to break so that they can warm themselves up. It's not particularly cold this morning. That's what's so nice. The wind is a, there's a, little, a little bit of a nip in the air. My goodness, not only do I have a frog in my frog in my throat i'm also getting tongue tied that's going to be fantastic stay tuned i might have another reproducing incident today which could be quite comical let's hope not sorry birdies that the sun has not come out yet i think it's going to break soon though once we get to higher ground we'll see if we can see the sun poking its nose out and the cloud cover is actually quite thick and this morning hmm right should we see if there's any more daker around here it's nice and open 
I wonder if the camp is not coming down with a cold because Craig's also got a little bit of a cough this morning and, and that's the unfortunate thing is when we live in such close proximity basically we live on top of one each other and we are like a of course a big family uh, so when one person goes down with a cold or anything like that or a bug gets in camp we all get it but I don't think it'll be anything too serious nothing that some tea and perhaps I don't know what else some orange juice could maybe fix right mm. Now we're just going past Vuyatella Dam. I think I'm going to go all the way across the dam wall. Maybe we'll see if my friends are Heidi Dars at the dam. And then we're going to head down Zoe's and then start checking to the western side because there doesn't seem to be much around here. But while we navigate these bumpy roads, let's go across to Byron. He's also arriving at a dam and it seems to be Twin Dams. We are down here at Taylor Twin Dams. Now, I just want to get off the vehicle quickly. Let's have a look. I'm just trying to see if perhaps this lion that we're looking for has crossed our boundary already. Um, so I'm trying to see if there are any fresh tracks. Uh, no. Here we go. Fresh track crossing south into Little Gauri, unfortunately. Yeah, he walks straight down all the way along here, straight past the dam and crossed our boundary. <clears throat> Looks like it is just the one male though. Nice big clear track. That is that is very unfortunate. I want to see if I can maybe find a nice clear one for you. Now you know Just having a look around here, just making sure. You know what, there are also tracks of a male leopard going this way. <laughs> okay, well that's uh, made things very interesting. Now it's not very clear, this substrate is a bit hard over here. Yeah, there's nice soft sand, so it's a bit easier to see the tracks. But clear male leopard tracks going this way, and this male lion crossed through over here. Um, I think we should just have a good look around here. Let's have a good little scan, but there's a clear track of this lion right here. I'm not sure if you can actually see it, Senzo. It's a bit faint, but there's a clear lion track right here. It's crossing. There's the other paw, you, um, or the other track right over here. You can see the indentation in the sand, actually. It's actually very clear. So, that's where that lion's crossed the boundary. But tracks of a male leopard going this way. Okay, so we've got our work cut out for us this morning, it looks like it. But um, you never know. Maybe the lion decided to change direction again and come back this way. I'll show you how far they can walk and they can cross through. Let's have a look at where these male leopard tracks go. Uh, again, you know, I always say this, this is, these are the times, especially times like this, I wish my friend Judas was with me to help me track and find these animals because he's such a great tracker. I was very fortunate, worked with a number, quite a few, um, a few great trackers, but, uh, but Judas and I worked together for about four, almost five years. Um, and he just had a sixth sense about tracking where to look and where to find animals. Who knows, maybe I learned something from him and we find this, this leopard or lion this morning. Hope I paid enough attention. I'm just checking the dam carefully. You never know, this leopard could very easily lie down and, and hide in a thicket near a dam wait for potential food. I'm not sure how fresh that leopard track was. I don't know if it was from late last night or early this morning. But we're going to have a good look around here. Paul, um, you asked how can we tell the size of the tracks or the size of the animal just by looking at the tracks or the footprints. 
Um, let me just have a look here quickly. Yeah, 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 there's a track. There we go. Okay, let me try to show you quickly. See if I can get a track here and I'll explain it to you. Let me circle it for you, Senzo, make it a bit easier to see. Um, there we go. <laughs> it's, it's actually quite difficult. There we go. There's the track over there. Can you? I don't know, can you see that sensor? It's, it's, <laughs> it's difficult, huh? But there we go, there's the back pad of the leopard track and the one, two, three, four toes. I'm not sure if you can see that. Like I said, the substrate at the moment is it's a bit difficult. There's it's a bit well, softer sand. But you know what makes it even harder? The clouds. Now the clouds, because there's not great light coming through, makes it even more difficult to see these tracks. Now, Paul, you were asking, how can I tell that it's a male just by looking at the tracks? Well, a male leopard track is much larger, much larger than a female track. It's also much rounder. And also with that male lion track, it's a big round track. It's a very, very large track, about twice the size of this male leopard track. So, it's, uh, the female tracks, Paul, they're a bit smaller, um, especially with the leopards. Smaller tracks, not as round as a big male leopard. But that's a nice clear track. We've walked along here. Now I wonder if it didn't go straight down the drainage line through through the Mulawati. We will try our best. I'm gonna have a look around now. I'm gonna have a good look around and see if we can't try to find this leopard. Alright, let's head back to Taylor. Um, who I think is is she approaching a dam now too? We did a 360, no we didn't do a 360, we did a 180 and we turned around and we went the other way because I found some male leopard tracks. I also found wild dog tracks. Now I know the wild dog tracks were from yesterday because we had them running around on the property. Unfortunately no one got to see them, we just saw all their footprints. Um, and then we also, it was really cool, we had the most amazing, it was probably about 30 second sighting or so, so it happened very quickly. But I was slender mongoose, which was amazing. And it was, Craig and I both looked at each other, we went, that's unusual, that's relaxed. And for most of you, the name Slender Mongoose might not even mean anything because we don't get to put them on screen very often. It was really, really cool. And there was also a little white-browed scrub robin sitting there and alarming at it. But, but maybe we'll get lucky. I, I don't think I've actually ever put a Slender Mongoose on screen before. We'll try again. Um, and then there were some leopard tracks coming this way to a male leopard. But they could have been... It could have been from yesterday too, but we're just going to drive in Vubu anyway and have a look here. I'm just also listening to the radio as we bumble about. I'm not sure what everyone's talking about. No, everyone's just... Oh, it's Byron that's talking on the radio now. So I thought, whose voice is that, Byron? Okay, to check here nicely. No one on top of that termite mound. And I haven't just haven't got any tracks at all, really. Let's see here if these leopard tracks are still going on the road. No, but the wild dogs came this way. Mmm, animals. Please don't let us be have a quiet morning. See, now I'm wanting to change my route because I'm here. I'm wondering if I shouldn't just do the entire boundary of Buffalo and actually go and check Buffalo Dam and see what's happening in that corner before we go to the far west. Very indecisive this morning. I don't know what to do with myself. What do you think, Craig? See, I'm trying to find these tracks of the lions that you said you heard. And they say just didn't come this way. And they say just stayed on before. So Rexon hasn't said anything either about lion tracks just yet. Although I'm sure Byron will have the game drive radio handled. We'll just turn it up just a little bit to see if anybody says something. No. Nah, no, there's nothing here. There's just lots of hyena tracks now going up and down. Okay. We'll just keep bumbling then until something decides to jump in front of our screen. Whee! 
Now, I believe you are all very excited about potentially seeing a Birmingham boy. Wouldn't that be nice? I like, I'm starting to like the Birminghams now. They're growing on me. Like I said, my favorite coalition of males has always been the four ways males. But the Birmingham boys are turning into such lovely lions and they've all got so much character. Informal is quite cool. I like him. I like that scar that he has on his eye. Let's quickly just scan here. I don't know if anybody's been up this way. Oh no, of course, yes. Rexon has checked this spot. So I'm not worried, too worried about tracks here then. Because he's, like I said, rexon has got James uh, sitting on the front of the car. So he'll be able to spot tracks better than I can. But... We know how many times we found carcasses along the uh, Bifflesook boundary between here and the fire break. So I'm going to make sure that I check all the trees carefully. And we should be able to see leopards and trees quite easily. Uh, especially because it's, well, the marulas have all lost their leaves now. But saying that, I haven't actually seen a leopard in a tree for quite some time. It's amazing though how all the cats out here sort of uh, vary spending time on the ground and up in the trees. In the summer months we normally see them up in the trees quite a bit. You can imagine why though. It's because there's lots of leaves so it's nice and cool up there. You also get away from the biting flies. Whereas in winter it's very exposed. It's better if you're trying to keep cool just to actually lay underneath a small shrub. You can't necessarily lay up in a bush willow and they're one of the few trees that have actually still got leaves on. We'll just check here carefully anyway. Hmm. Yeah, the only thing that's really around, there's a couple of impalas scattered here and there. There's some young waterbuck. Why are you running away? And they're running away for it. We'll never see them. Gone into the thicket. <laughs> it might be one of those days. Craig, did you shower? <laughs> they catch you off guard. <laughs> Panicked. <laughs> Okay, so no, nothing in these trees. There's literally there's just it's barren out here at the moment. It's so wonderful. Not even a bird sitting up on top of the tree. <laughs> Douglas, you said that I should find the wild dogs because you quite enjoy watching me drive around like a madman. Should we change it to mad woman? I reckon so. Um, I don't think we'll find the dogs. I, the, the, like I said, those tracks were from yesterday and the tracks we had yesterday were very fresh and we couldn't even find them because they moved so quickly. But you never know. Uh, like I was chatting about it yesterday morning. It's almost impossible to try and track down wild dogs. They move so, 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 so quickly. And so we'll just have to drive and then hope that we bump into them. Let me just quickly go through this dip. Might be a couple of gremlins trying to jump on board. We won't. Let there we go. We threw the little dodgy, dodgy spot. Yeah, I think we're going to go to Bufflesook, Bufflesook Ham. Almost said Bufflesook Ham again. Bufflesook Dam. And look there, because yeah, I don't know if there's maybe anything on the property right now. Maybe they're still busy making their way here, because it's so clouded and overcast. They could definitely still be moving. We have a look at these impala ewes. Hi girls. Are you waiting for the new green grass to come up? You're going to have to wait a little bit longer, I'm afraid. You can see the rest of the herd is just at the back. And we're just hanging a little bit further sort of north of the group. But they won't stay back for too long because it's very risky not huddling up together. Because that's what a leopard would be looking for. Is they'd be looking for one impala or one inyala, bushbuck, whichever antelope species they're going after. That's sort of straying off to the side. Where they can catch it without causing too much of a scene. And then also, they run less of a chance of being spotted. So you two better hurry up and get back amongst the middle of the group. But they're just happily feeding. And we'll start to see lots of animals coming through these burnt areas now in these fire breaks. Not that this was particularly burnt very much um, but there will be some green grass that should start coming through over the next few weeks and they'll be very happy about that 
Doesn't seem to have some little twitch in it. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Mm. You know, normally this area, there's always cat tracks. All the time. But not today. No, some baboon tracks from yesterday. But that seems to be it. A couple of elephant tracks too. Uh, going into the property, but also looks like from late yesterday afternoon. Maybe they're still around. It'll give us something else to follow up on. I'm always game for elephants. I'm going to send you now across to Byron. He's just done a Mulwati cruise. Let's go find out if he saw some interesting birds. I didn't actually, to be honest. I wasn't even looking for birds. I was purely trying to look for leopard tracks. And... Um, but no sign, no sign of that leopard coming through. We've got some impala and inyala. Have a look at nice little some a young oh there's a young male inyala off to the left. There we go. You can see he's just starting to turn. I was starting to get a bit of a greyish coat, those little horns. What oh, a beautiful antelope. My, the nice thing now is we've got Impala and Inyala standing out there. Well, look at the horns on that Impala ram. Massive. Um, so as I was saying, we've got Impala and Inyala standing out here. So, they will hopefully help us in finding our leopard. If that leopard passes through this area, they will alarm call. And we'll know exactly where to look. So, it's great to have all these antelope around. Trying to listen the whole time too. Trying to listen for any, any, any sign of um, predator calling or alarm calls or anything. Paul, you say these horns look so sharp. They do indeed, and they are sharp. They are sharp, Paul. Very sharp. And there's a barred owlet calling down in the Mulwati behind us. It sounds quite far. It's amazing how far that sound can be heard from. I knew there was a road heading down there. There isn't, unfortunately. Well, we've had some excitement this morning. We started with giraffe. We've seen elephant. We've had lion tracks. Unfortunately, they crossed south into Little Gauri, so we can't follow follow them down there. Um, oh, and a lot of you are asking if I could please go check the Janet hole. Um, we found uh, we found the Janet a few uh, about a week ago, hiding in a little hole in a in a tree in a hollowed out tree. I've checked it twice now. I checked it yesterday and I checked it this morning. No sign of that Janet. So maybe maybe it's hiding in there a little bit deeper. Oh wow! Look at the bird of prey. Oh, it's a juvenile batelier just flying above us. Sorry, Senzo. Well done. <laughs> Got in quick enough. Well done, Senzo. We've got a, gl a glimpse of it. There's a juvenile batelier that just flew over us. That was, that was nice. That was wonderful. So a young batelier, still brown in color. Not that adult black coloration that we used to see with that red face. The juvenile bateliers are still very, very brown. But a short tail, easy to identify with it flying over us. There's a lot of Inyala in this area. I've spotted at least three or four more, if not if not more, around here. So a lot of Inyala to keep an eye out for predators for us.
Lynn, yes indeed, the different um, antelope species coexist completely and the reason for that is most of them are herbivores, not most of them, I'm sorry. <laughs> all of them are herbivores, Lynn, <laughs> they're all herbivores so they don't, they don't uh, necessarily challenge one another, there's no need for, to challenge. Um, the other thing is, is that each antelope species may fill a different niche in nature, so they feed on different um, different vegetation. For example, kudu are browsers. So the kudu would happily be around impala, where the impala are generally, well they're mixed feeders, they graze and browse, but because they're different heights, do you see something says that? Spiderweb, oh. Um, so the, um, the kudu would feed at a higher or at a higher height compared to the impala, so there's no direct competition. So Lynn, it's, it's no problem for these antelope to be found together, like we just saw also the inyala and the impala together, they'd feed on slightly different vegetation, so no direct competition. Sorry, got a spider web in my mouth. Um, oh, the sun just breaking through those clouds now, and um, but uh, yes, Lynn, I mean, if you think of the wildebeest and impala often found together, kudu, minyala, and all, all these antelope species would happily move in the same area or, or stay close together. The other thing is for safety. They would keep a lookout for predators and warn each other if there's any danger. So you definitely see different antelope species moving together or in the same area. Chitty Chatty Meg, um, you ask if we eat impala like we uh, like you eat deer in the United States. Um, we do, we do indeed. So there's actually a lot of venison. Now, um, for those of you who are unsure what venison is, venison is any game meat, any game meat. It's not a specific type of antelope, but it's uh, any game meat. And um, and we eat impala, we eat kudu, we eat springbok in South Africa now those animals would not necessarily come out of the game reserve itself they would be probably can't really say farmed but they would be um, be in areas people specifically selling that meat to for for people to eat and um, and venison is is really good it's quite lean um, and obviously there's uh, because it's not farmed as such no hormones or anything like that injected into them. So actually very healthy meat. But yes, Meg, we feed on, uh, oh, we feed, <laughs> we eat, <laughs> we eat um, Impala and as my, my favorite, I must be honest, is Kudu and Springbok. Really tasty, really nice to eat. Um, but we don't eat it that often. It, it depends on which part of South Africa you're in and, and if it's readily available. Right, well, let's go back to Taylor. We've had no, no luck with these leopard tracks. I'm still going to check this area very carefully. Let's go find out how Taylor's morning's going. Well, Byron, I'm in the same boat as you. The only tracks that I have actually seen, hang on, I might change my mind now, have been Impala tracks. However, Mm, I have one set of male lion tracks, but they I'm trying to sorry, I'm staring down on the ground. I'm trying to establish if they're fresh or not, or if it's just because the sand is so fine here and there isn't much of it. It's not creating a oh sorry, I'm getting distracted. There's a little squirrel, Craig. We can have a look at while I try and figure out. And oh, no, it's gone now. Never mind. It has disappeared. Mm, I can't decide if these tracks are fresh or not. We'll just carry on. There's nice sand. No, I don't know how fresh that track was. Maybe it was just... Yeah, I think it's actually from the other night, in fact. It's just the ground is so hard here, and there's just like a fine layer of sand. Uh, it caught my eye, but it doesn't look peculiar. 
particularly fresh. It's very quiet, but it sounds like it's quiet all over. I actually don't think anybody has found any lions or any leopards just yet. So I wonder where they all are. Sneaky. <laughs> now Bree Bree for research. Uh, I don't. Megan does though. Megan's doing a project at the Meg Megan's directing. And uh, she was making all sorts of tracks. She's made, made her own ones though. Using plaster of Paris and gauze. Um, it was actually goes further into the mud depression which makes for a better mold but no I don't know Jamie's done it a couple of times oh dear so I think we just lost Taylor there for a second um, no I'm still driving around trying to find any sign of these predators or any further sign of these predators I have no idea where they've gone well I know where the male lion went I don't know where the leopard's gone but I don't want to give up just yet yesterday afternoon we were looking for um, Hosanna oh there's a nice family of warthogs enjoying the burnt area over here as I was saying yesterday, we were trying to look for Hosanna in the afternoon. Couldn't find him and we drove around, we drove everywhere, drove through the bush and just had no luck. But just before we thought it was time to give up, we bumped into him. So Keys, never give up, keep trying. The nice thing about driving around here is you're bound to bump into something, whether it be warthogs or nyala or impala. If you don't have any luck with the predators, it's not always about the predators. It's nice to see them, don't get me wrong. But, uh, but to see the other animals around, you're always going to bump into something. See those warthogs using their snouts to dig and try to get to the grass shoots and the roots. <laughs> Mischief, you say hello, Pumba. <laughs> so you must be a big uh, uh, Lion King fan. <laughs> I almost said Game of Thrones fan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sinatra Warthog is fairly tasty. Um, it is, it's um, it, it's a darker meat, much darker than than pork, um, but but similar in flavour. Uh, but it is quite gamey. Um, but yes, Warthog can be tasty. All right. Oh, Taylor's got a bird. She wants to show you. I'm going to carry on from here. It's a black collared barbet spotted by Buttonet Craig. How cool is that? Just one on its own. Now they're normally actually quite gregarious. You can see them in small flocks and they are quite noisy birds. They make a call that sort of sounds something like this. Not really, because they don't really sound like they're whistling. But it's quite a beautiful call. I was hoping that if I could entice this bird to sing us a tune, but obviously I'm not doing the call accurate enough because they're also quite territorial. They're one of the birds that you don't actually want to play the call near them, the, their real call, because they will respond and they'll come and sit quite close by to you. And there's no need to really upset them that much. You, know, you look a little bit on the cold side. Now I'm at my favorite birding spot at the moment, and, and this is where we see lots and lots of birds. Um, we're just on Inyala Road North near the jackalberry that's dropping fruit. So there are plenty of plenty birds around here. We won't be able to see too many of them because they're hiding in the leaves. So unless they very kindly land out in the open, 
just as this barbet has, then we'll be able to, of course, spot them. But hornbills, there's crested franklins around here too. I'm looking, actually looking for my southern bobo again, the one that was around here. But no such luck just yet. Oh, I think that bird's going to fly soon. Isn't that very pretty? Oh, it's having a scratch. Oh, that's nice. It's going to preen itself. We don't often get to sit with these black-collared barbets for such a long time. And it's only very, very brief sightings and they always fly away. I'd actually like to try and find a, a black-collared barbet nest. So just like the crested barbets, they use natural cavities. But I have yet to find one. But I'm sure they're all living in the Mulwati somewhere. That's where we seem to see them most. You're so cold. You're very fluffy. They're beautiful birds, they really are. Once we're away from this bird, I'll actually play the call for you. Apparently this one hasn't got very good balance either. It almost just fell off of its perch. Do you know what I was laughing at, and I actually completely forgot to mention it yesterday. If any of you were watching the Sunset Safari, and we went across to James a couple of times in Kenya, and they were looking at the Rupal's vultures, and as well as a marabou stork. Did anybody see the vulture pecking the marabou stork's feet? It was the funniest thing... I was hosing myself in the tent because I can watch the show while I'm in there too. And uh, I don't know if James missed it, but my goodness, in Essentia and I were in tears because his vulture was pecking the marabou stork's feet and the marabou stork was trying to kick the vulture in the head. It was really hilarious. Maybe some of you spotted it and actually took some screenshot. Remember, you can share them around because it was a great sighting. Hashtag Safari Live. And let us know what number the black collared barbet is on your list too. I'm always keen to know uh, who's nearing 100, who's nearing 200, so that we can try and, and get you uh, to those sort of round figures rather than being on number 98 or 192. We need to get those numbers up. So thank you very much, Black Collared Bob. That was beautiful. What lovely sighting of you. Let's see if anyone else is here. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go stealth mode. We'll just roll quietly and maybe we'll find someone. You know what I'm starting to think? I wonder if these lion tracks are not the same one that Byron actually had too. Because through here they look slightly fresher. But where we were earlier it was a bit difficult to tell. Uh, just lots of go-away birds around here. Oh, Tally, you said that that bird was number 87. Good job. Oh, Winnie, you've got a few more to go. We'll try and... Oh! Chitty, chatty, Meg, you're only on number four. We need to get those numbers up. Right, let's see what else we can find. I can't believe the birds are right in the top of the tree. It's impossible for us to see them. We've, we've tried to tackle on the jackalberries many times. And with their dense foliage, it's, it's impossible. And we'll try and see who else is here. We've seen the African green dons already. We've got the black collared barbet. Ooh, Heather, there's a nice figure. You said that that black collared barbet was 124. Well done, Heather. That's great. Right, now, where are the rest of them? We could potentially see lots of birds. We've seen turtle doves already. I'm just trying to think. There's, now there's absolutely nothing around here. I'm looking on the knobthorn trees that are flowering for uh, any sunbirds. But sadly, there's not much. Obviously, not an active food party moving through here. Mm. bird party I can hear them where are you there were some starlings but there's some other things that I can hear moving here are you sister killers that I'm listening to let's just have a look I can hear lots and lots of birds now yeah there's there's definitely a food party coming through here now oh can we go to this tree this side sorry Craig I know you're looking on uh, there's a whole lot there's chagras Moving through here, hear them, there they go, that's them bouncing around there, and the, that looks, open your mouth, what one are you, Prinia, or are you a rattling sister killer, might have been a rattling sister killer, because I could hear the rattling sister killers just now, and that's hard to tell from here. There's even a drongo that's trying to mimic a rattling sister killer. There's another one just a little bit further down. Mm, we should be able to see it. Right, there we go. 
also very very busy going about its morning sort of grooming rituals no nope. where the chagras gone the chagras are so quick they were making lots of noise but they seem to be flying away now oh they're all moving off so it's just a little bird party of lbjs mm. And then the other thing is it's not the greatest, obviously, with the, the color of the sky at the moment. The birds sort of drown out in the light. Let's keep going. Let's see if we can find another food party that's actually willing to cooperate. Apparently, this lot over here does not care to be on the show. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll keep searching and hopefully we'll be able to add a couple more birds to all of your lists. Maybe some interesting ones. Byron, however. Oh, hang on. Blue wax bills just here in front sorry Megan I know you and I'm, I'm not supposed to do that but being very naughty look how beautiful they are and they, they're still there they just jumped a couple of high there's a whole lot of them also again another gregarious bird oh they're so pretty also all fluffed up very chirpy little birds let's see if we can hear them making a call they're very sort of they don't make much noise when they're, in a, when they're in a group together, yes, then they make quite a loud noise. Otherwise, otherwise they just make these very sort of subtle ch -ch -ch -ch. I can't do it very well either. I'm not very good at making bird calls, just some of them. That's so precious though. What a lovely sighting. You can see there were quite a few of them there. Oh, that was lovely. I'm happy. There we go. Another one. Blue wax bills. Also quite difficult to, to get on camera because, as you saw, they don't like to sit still for very long unless they open up their wings and give themselves a preen. But I know that we have got... Oh, no, another one. Emerald spotted wood dove. Are oh, they all just landing in exactly the same spot? That's one we haven't got this morning. Another beautiful one. I wonder why they're all flying to this termite mound. And off it goes. <laughs> Should we wait to see who else flies down onto the termite mound? There is someone else hopping around. There we go, someone's flying up top. Who are you? Jump up a little bit higher please, I can't tell what you are. Interesting coloured bird. I actually, unfortunately I missed that completely. I have no idea what we were just looking at. I'm trying to find a spot some more. No, okay. I don't know what that was. If you got some screenshots, you can hashtag Safari Live and send them to us, and then I'll try and identify it a little bit later. Or if you managed to get a better view than I did, and you can stare at the picture for a little bit, let us know. Hashtag Safari Live. You can tell Megan to tell me, and it'll be great to find out. But it had interesting colours of it. But there's a, some nasty gremlins that I can see waiting around the corner, spears in hand. So before they jump on my car, let's go across to Byron, and he's arrived at the biggest dam we have to see. I uh, have indeed, Taylor. I'm at Chitra Dam. We haven't had any further luck with signs of predators. Uh, lovely morning out. It's still a bit overcast, still a lot of cloud cover around. Bit of the sun peeking through the clouds there. A lot of hippo activity. All the animals are still in the water, the hippo, crocodiles, and they'll probably stay in the water when it is cool like this. Um, when the temperature is much colder, these animals prefer staying in the water. Now, someone from Chitwa Chitwa told me that they had a leopard near camp last night. And it doesn't look like it moved too far. It's possibly still in the area. So that's also why I decided to come out and have a look around there. Maybe we get lucky and find a leopard. We've got a tire that looks like it's going flat. <laughs> I'm not sure. Not, that wouldn't be good. Senzo, did you practice changing tires in the Mara? Yeah, we did. <laughs> Yeah, right. Senzo says he got stuck with Brent a few times. Brent gets stuck a lot. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just joking. A lot of bird life around here. There's, look at all the blacksmith lapwings just off behind me over here. 
Quite a big group, a lot of Egyptian geese. Oh, Sinatra, now you say you haven't been to Chitra Dam with us before. Well, welcome. <laughs> a beautiful dam, this really, really lovely dam. And uh, we always have some something exciting happening, whether it be a group of blacksmith lapwings like this or elephants coming to swim. <laughs> Senzo's bent over in laughter behind me at the moment. He says that was a quick one. <laughs> Senzo, you see, I think he's been in the Mara too long. <laughs> I can hear a woodpecker knocking in the distance, bearded woodpecker. Cat lover, I think the most common bird we find here, just at the dam itself, would definitely be the Egyptian geese. There they are. Um, there we go. The Egyptian geese, definitely the most common bird around the dam, I would say. Uh, the blacksmith uh, lapwings, or blacksmith plovers, blacksmith lapwing, they also um, quite a quite an abundant bird and quite common around the dams. Um, or oh, what else? I suppose the water thickenies, they'll be hiding around here too, the water thickenies. Uh, some of the green-backed herons, they're often around here. So a number of birds, but definitely the, the lapwings and the Egyptian geese, they are always here. You can see the hippo just below the dead tree. There's a young one towards the back there. There it is. See there? There's a young hippo. Sticking its head out watching us. <laughs> so these blacksmith lapwings can make quite a noise. Mr. P from Canada. Hello, Mr. P. Now, you asked on the Egyptian geese from Egypt. No, not necessarily. I think it's the markings, the facial markings, and that is how they get the name Egyptian geese. Um, but, they, but they're not. They're found all over South Africa, everywhere, everywhere. The golf courses, um, and various areas around Johannesburg, Cape Town, all over, they, they're littered with Egyptian geese. They really have taken over almost in most parts. I'm just trying to scan to see if there's anything coming down to drink perhaps, but I don't see anything for now. Mary, you say Chitra is oh so pretty. It is indeed. I um, must be honest, I think this camp has got such a lovely view of the dam and they always, I think, I'm, well I'm sure they, they see a lot around here. Chitra Chitra around the dam. I mean we've been so lucky with the amount of elephant and that that we see coming down to drink here. It's a good source of water for a lot of animals and I wouldn't be surprised if at night they get a lot of animals like lion and leopard coming down to drink too. Hold on a second, hold on. I can hear an alarm call. Wait. It's 
come from that side. Alright, I can hear what sounds like Kudu or Nyala. It's quite far. It's on the other side of the dam, everyone. Um, in that direction. It's coming from there. That's good. That's a good sign. Alright, let's see if we can find. Hello everybody, sorry about that. The gremlins are jumping on board this morning, but Byron should be fine. He's of course Muscles McGee. Right, what are we going to do now, Craig? I think, I don't know if he's actually gone down to check the western corner, so that's where we'll be heading now. We're on Pangolin track at the moment. We've just come back to Rai Chele Pan. I think Byron's actually already come down this road. We'll just go over it again and then we'll maybe we'll go down Philemon's cut line and then take the new road and we'll start like that as we bounce around. Just wear some sticks. <laughs> oh, hang on. You see, I can't. I, there's. Okay. So it's not an area where you can drive. It sounds like Tingana has been found. I think it's in Buffel's Hook, which is exciting. It sounds like he's got a kill as well. Unfortunately, my game drive comms are, are not fantastic. Everyone sounds like they're speaking in a robot voice, and it cuts out every now and then, so I can't get 100% uh, sort of update, and now we're going to turn the radio completely off. You can imagine what it sounds like now, everyone uh, responding to the first cat of the day. Uh, so we will go and try and find our own. But yes, that's good to hear that Tingan is about. I was a gentleman by the name of Carl asking earlier about Mr. T. Well, there we go. Got your update now if you are still watching. Okay, so we're back on Weaver's Nest. I'm trying to think, where did Byron have these elephants? Because there's lots of elephant tracks around here. So we saw them coming from Enyala Road South and then heading this way. They might be around. Maybe we'll try and follow up on them again. I know they were walking through a block, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll wait for them to come out and then we'll try and go in those areas. But I do want to very. Oh. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So it was one bull heading in a westerly direction on Weaver's Nest. Well, we're going west on Weaver's Nest, so we're obviously going in the right spot, and I, I reckon that that bull would have been tailing a breeding herd. That's what they typically like to do. And we'll just keep keep moving at a steady pace, and hopefully the grey giants will pop out somewhere. Beep, beep. Excuse me, Christopher Franklin. Now, Kobe, you were wondering if if we get distracted, not distracted, I don't even know why I said, why did I say distracted, I have absolutely no idea, the word was actually frustrated when we can't find the animals that we track, of course we do, but you know what it is Kobe, it's we're so disappointed in ourselves, especially if those tracks haven't crossed out of the, our, our traverse, and we know that they're here somewhere, it's the most disheartening thing in the entire world, and I'll never forget for uh, when I was guiding and I was working with a tracker, for him it was basically like he couldn't do his job properly and that because that's what he specialized in is track and sign and trailing animals and then finding them so uh, yeah you do get you definitely do get frustrating but it's just part of the game it's uh, it's just one of those things I suppose and you, you just have to deal with it you know nature disappoints us constantly I mean, you've seen it, you'll just miss an animal by a couple of seconds, gone, never find it again. Uh, the, is that an elephant? I don't know if that's an elephant or just a green tree. No, I think I'm going to go with green tree, I'm just scanning across the valley. No, not an elephant, not the elephants that we were looking for. I think we'll stay with our, our sort of plan here. We'll keep going down Philemon's cut line and then we'll take that new road and we'll drive along it. Yeah, there really hasn't been anybody. Everyone's actually moved on to Buffalo's Hook. I wonder where the Nkuhuma Pride are. 
also haven't heard about their whereabouts at all. It's, uh, oh, could you? You look like a tree. You're very camouflaged. It's working very well. You fooled me for a second. That was amazing. The direction that we were coming from, she's just hiding behind a couple of shrubs, but it really did break up her, her complete sort of uh, shape into bits and pieces. So that, that really fooled me until we drove past her and then I saw the rest of her. That was quite nice. Thank you, girl. Isn't she beautiful? I'm doing a big stretch. Oh, there's nothing quite like a stretch first thing in the morning. Oh, she's just nibbling away. And there are a couple of other kudu, but they're even more camouflaged. I don't think you'll really see them. But it's uncommon to just see one kudu all on its own. This is the normal sighting that we do have of them. Now, Michael, you're wondering if overgrazing is ever a problem in the bush. Uh, I haven't seen it here just yet and I reckon that's because there's such a massive area for these animals to move around in and and they'll graze the, the grass down to a certain length and then they normally move off you know where I did see a, a lot of overgrazing was down in the Eastern Cape uh, you typically will see it on these the fenced uh, private game reserves so not all the game reserves out there are like the, the Greater Kruger National Park where the animals have got uh, eight and a half million acres to roam around and the typical size of a game reserve uh, it, it can be any size it just depends on I suppose how much money you have to purchase land but uh, the one I worked on down Eastingham was about 25,000 hectares or so somewhere around there so about what's that uh, maybe 55,000 acres something like that so quite big a nice a nice space and um, more traverse than what we have to drive around on at the moment um, and the animals can't migrate naturally they, they're limited to that 25,000 hectares and you'd often see on the big open areas and also the Eastern Cape doesn't have a lot of grass that uh, the animals would suffer and, and we'd see it quite a bit the warthogs cause serious uh, devastation what has she got on her eye piece of leaf that's just stuck there. That's nice. Perhaps she's going to a fancy dress party. Well, there's a thorn that's also stuck in her eye. I'm not actually sure. No, I think it's just the leaf. And the flies are bothering her too. <laughs> she looks like she needs a bit of a groom. Well, Bombo Girl, you said that she's such a delicate eater. They are. They, they're not sort of like us as humans or, or even the lions and leopards that are so gutsy. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have to remind yourself to breathe. They are very delicate the way that they pick at the leaves, but they're also searching for the tastiest, the sweetest, and the youngest leaves. They want, don't want to necessarily eat the, the older leaves that aren't as palatable. That's delicious. She seems to be enjoying that tree quite a bit. <laughs> oh, there's an oxpecker. Hello, oxpecker. Mischief, you say all oh, those ears. Yes, they've got a very, very large ears. It's very important for a kudu, of course, to have them, to be able to hear any predators that come towards them. Remember, they do live in the very, very thick vegetation, so it's one of their defenses that they rely on quite heavily. But we'll move on from these kudu now. We'll go search the new road, as we said, for perhaps a spotted cat. Byron, however, is having all the luck. He's got a herd of my absolute favorite animals. We do indeed. We've just found a wonderful herd of elephant. Some babies. There are just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 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 twelve thirteen, sixteen. There are about sixteen, sixteen or seventeen elephants around us now. Um, and there was some more not too far now. I wonder if this herd isn't possibly going to go drink down at Chitra Dam. Oh, this is wonderful. Look at this. That is amazing. Here comes a big female. <laughs> How great is this? They're walking very quickly down in the direction of Chitu Chitu Dam. So I wonder if they don't go down to drink. What I'm going to do is I'll circle back and just go have a look if they do go down. That would be wonderful to see. That's a big female walking down the road there. Beautiful female. 
<laughs> Chitty Chatty Maggie say this is perfect. It is indeed. It really is wonderful. Hey, what a nice surprise. Now we, I went and had a look um, where I heard those alarm calls. Couldn't find anything, but also it was down a deep drainage line, and we wouldn't have had signal down there anyway if we did um, if we did find something. But I couldn't find the kudu that we heard alarm calling. I had a quick look around, a brief look though. Let's see where these elephant go. Wow, this is such a wonderful herd. A big herd and some really small ones. Young, or quite a few youngsters. I wonder where they are going, if they are going to go down to drink. It's quite cool, so I don't, I don't know if they will. Um, you know, but then again, elephants will drink when they're thirsty. It doesn't necessarily have to be hot or cold. Uh, moving very quickly that whole herd was moving very very quickly so it makes me think that they are heading towards the water often elephant get quite excited when they know they're getting close to water and they start walking a lot quicker yeah a few of them are just ahead of us so, quite a big herd spread out No, David, the kudu would not alarm call for the elephant, not at all. There's no reason for the kudu to alarm call that elephant. I'm just going to stop, hold on a second, just over here. 